In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to troll for walleye here on Lake Erie. After watching, you'll know exactly what you need to do, what tools you'll need, what to expect from Lake Erie, and how to actually catch walleye trolling out here on Lake Erie. So stay tuned and always keep fishing. Let's go. All right, so first we're gonna start with some of the equipment that you'll need. Right now I have my Daiwa six foot six foot pole that I use for my planer boards. And this one is, it's a heavy action. And then I have my 10 foot six pole right here. This one is really long. Now you don't need them this long. If I could do it again, I probably would get like an eight foot pole. Now this one I use for my dipsy divers. And I'll explain how we use all of those in a second. And again, this one also has a line counter on it as well. We have reels that have a counter on them, and that's what we use to tell how much line we're putting out. It's important where we're trying to get our bait right there in front of the fish. On all of my poles, I'm using a 30 pound test line, and it's a braid test line. I've had this uh, line on my uh, poles for a long time now, and it's worked pretty well for me. Another thing that you wanna have is a good fish finder. So right here, that shows us exactly where those fish are. So it, I'm seeing this one mark around 30, 30 feet down. And then we see some marks around 20 feet as well. So I'm gonna be trying to put my lures right there, 20 and 30 feet and see if I can get some walleye. So having that depth finder really comes in handy when trying to locate where those walleye are, are suspended at. Now you gotta have a boat out here that can handle Lake Erie. These waves can pick up pretty fast on Lake Erie. So you need to have a motor that's powerful enough to get you to safety when you need to be safe. And when you're trolling, another thing, maintain your speed. Now in the summertime, you wanna go around two miles per hour. That's usually the typical speed that you wanna go for our walleye. When it's getting really cold out, walleye are more sluggish, so they might prefer like one and a half miles per hour. So you adjust your speed accordingly. As far as lures that we're using, there's a lot of different things that we can use. Today, we're gonna to be using bandits, which are a crankbait. These are the bandits that we can have as options that we're gonna be trying out today. And then we also have spoons. Now, I'm gonna show you a little bit of how these spoons look as well. So here's a spoon that we use, and we'll show you how we actually use that as well. And we have a good mix of different variety of colors. The walleye like certain colors that they'll bite on, so we gotta make sure we put out there what they're biting on. Another thing, which we're not gonna use today, but I'm gonna show you really fast, is worm harnesses. And what we do is, this is the one that I made a while ago, it has some beads on it, and then it also has some hooks on it. You'll actually just put a worm on there, and that'll uh, shine nice in the water, and the walleye, sometimes they wanna go after that. Other thing I'm gonna use is a weight. This is a two ounce weight. I have a clip on it. And what I'll end up doing is letting the line out so far, it might be like 35 feet. And then I'll also place this clip on there. That'll allow this lure to get deeper to the location where I want to, because this lure is only gonna go so deep. You have to put out so much line. So this'll allow that lure to get down deeper, faster. Another thing we're gonna use is this planer. This is a planer it has on there, it says right. So this is gonna go on this side. It's gonna get this lure all the way to the side of the boat. That way we can have our lines out away from the boat. So that way they separate from each other. What we do with this is we'll clip it on, clip that on the back part right there, and then clip it on right here. And then we'll go ahead and let this out. And that's gonna start moving away from the boat. You see when that starts, swimming, it's going away, it's going on the outside of the boat. So that way we don't have our lines all tangled up. Two planter boards on one side and they're away from each other. That's what we wanna have. We wanna have our planter boards away from each other when they're out there so that way they don't get tangled up. We'll just watch that now. Once that pole starts jumping up and down, that's when we know we got us a fish. All right, so here we go with our dipsy diver pole and here's our dipsy diver that we have. And on the back, if you can see that, it has numbers on it. And that allows us to adjust which side of the boat to put those, this dipsy diver, because that's gonna take this away from the boat as well. And we, want, we don't want our lines tangling up while we're fishing out here. So a number three setting on there is gonna push this dipsy diver along with the lure further away from the boat. This is connected directly to that 30 pound test line. And then what we also have is we have this right here, it's a shock absorber. When those fish hit, we want some a little bit of absorption so that way it doesn't tear everything up. 
Now, we don't want to lose our equipment, so that's why we're using our 30-pound test line, that braided line that's right here. This has a clip. So this is with the Dipsy Diver set. If you hear me saying that sometimes, this sets that Dipsy Diver so that way it can start diving. Once this is released, then it's, the Dipsy Diver starts going up in the water column and then you, it's easier to reel in. That's when you know you sometimes have a fish as well. Now, extended on that is a leader. Now, this is a mono line. I'm using a 17 pound test line for that. And that six foot long leader allows this to be able to be ahead and the fish not kind of worrying about what this is. It'll see that we just have this lure that's connected to this right here that's spinning back there and it'll just keep its eyes focused on that. For this, I'm gonna actually use a spoon, small spoon, not that big, but they go after it. I'm gonna just hook that on there like that. All right, so what we do is we set our Dipsy Diver before putting it out there. We'll reel that all the way up like that and then we'll clear this line counter. We'll set it back to zero so that way we can have a fresh start and then we'll put this in the water. Then we're gonna let that out. You let it out slow, so that way it doesn't tangle up with the other lines as well. So you put your finger on that line and you start kind of letting that out to the desired depth on there. And now I'm looking at the chart just to give me an idea of where to put that one. This is the number two setting. I want it to go down about 30 feet. So I'm looking at that and it's like 57 feet is where I wanna have this counter go to. And I'm actually gonna put it a little bit higher than that. So I'll probably stop this around, around 52. So that way, that way it doesn't go too deep on there. You can see how that's bending right there. It's gonna have that steady bend the whole time because we're trolling going that way. Once that starts pounding down, then you know you got a fish. Another tool to actually get your lure to the right spot. And we use this with our planer boards and it's the jet diver. So similar to the Dipsy Diver, this has the locking feature that allows, that means this jet diver is set. This is a 40 jet, meaning that you put out so much line, this is gonna get your lure 40 feet deep. And again, this has the leader that comes from this. And again, six foot leader, something around there, five to six feet. And then our lure is gonna be on the back of this. Usually you run like a spoon or something like that, or even like a worm harness off of that. You typically don't run like a crankbait or anything like that from your jet diver. Today, I think we're gonna probably try to put ours out about 55, 60 feet back. Let's see if we can get us a, a fish that's around that 20 feet mark. So I'm gonna pull this other line in, check that one, see if there's like a fish on there. If not, see if we can get a fish on that. All right, peace. All right, so nothing on that one. Out here on Lake Erie, you can only have three poles in the water per, per person. So you make sure you abide by the rules that they have so that way the man won't get you. <laughs> you got this out, to go in the water, reset our counter, and we to have that go back about 55 feet. And catching the fish, you're gonna need a really good solid net. Today we have a Beckman net that's about, I would say about six feet long. I'm not exactly sure on the, the, the size of it, but you definitely need a good net and possibly even a backup net to have on board with you. Um, the other thing is when the fish come in, you're gonna need a good set of pliers. These are a need because those walleye have some very sharp teeth and you don't want to stick your hand in there when you're trying to fish out that lure to get it out of his mouth. You want some pliers to be able to stick in, grab that, those hooks, and then uh, get that lure out of his mouth. To unset those planer boards, what you do is you point it towards there, a little flick, and then you let that planer board just slide on back. That way it'll keep it from tangling with those other lines. And once it's sliding back, sliding back, then you can go ahead and start reeling it in. When we're reeling these fish in, we're gonna reel them in up the middle of the boat. When we reel them in up the middle, we don't want them to be tangled with any of the other lines. Tangles is not your friend, so we want to avoid getting tangled up as much as we can out here when we're trolling. Looks like we got something small on this line. Best thing to do though is to just check it just to make sure. You don't want to have something that's small on there keeping you from catching something that's big. I see it way back there, and it could be a walleye. So, like I said, we're, we're fishing for walleye. 
We got a small hit on there. We want to check it and see what we have on there. Now it's diving back down. Okay, here we go. That's it, that's it guys. That's what we wanted right there. A small walleye, but that's how we catch it. Again, like we said, use these pliers, grab onto there, and then take that out of his mouth. There we go. Another thing that you may want to do as well is get a glove. But this is what we're catching, guys. It's small. This is not a keeper size. For, for walleye, it needs to be about 15 inches for you can keep it. But uh, that's how you start catching some walleye out here on Lake Erie. We'll uh, throw this back in, start getting us some more. All right. This is the lure that we caught that last one on. We'll put this back in. All right, I'm gonna check this one because it's been in, it hasn't caught anything. And you see how I like pulled up on there? You gotta do that to unset that dipsy. So if there's a fish on, you do that to unset the dipsy so that way it's not so hard to pull in. Now I unset the dipsy, but I am still feeling some weight. So we actually do have a fish on here. Wow, I was getting ready to take this lure off, which is our lure we caught a lot of fish with in the past, but that's why it's always good to check. Look at that. Oh, there we go. This one looks like a little bit bigger than the last one, but still, it's not keeper size. At least not for me. All right, get our pliers right here. There we go, guys. <laughs> Another walleye. And that one we caught actually on the Dipsy Diver. And it's a little bit harder to tell with those hits sometimes, especially when you have fish that's not that big. But this one, nice looking walleye. Look at that, guys. Nice looking walleye. That's how we're doing it, though. So you saw how we did it with the planter board. Now you've seen how we did it with the Dipsy Diver. All right, I'm gonna get this back in. All right, so let's recap. We've gone over a lot of information about what you need. We talked about the boat. We talked about some of the equipment in the boat, like the depth finder that you'll need. We talked about the poles. We talked about the line, the type of test line that you'll need. Um, one thing I didn't mention is the rod holders. You see these rod holders right here. These are some solid rod holders that you can put those rods in so that way you'll be able to troll and not have your poles slide out or anything like that. So some nice secure rod holders. We did talk about the reels as well. Having those counters on them is important to putting the lines out as far as you need to, to get it right in front of those fish. So we talked about the lures as well. We got crankbaits that we're using today. We have spoons that we're using as well. And we have worm harnesses, which we're not using today, but those are some good options that you can use. We talked about the dipsy divers and we talked about the two ounce weights as well. And we use those typically when we're using those crankbaits, those deep diving crankbaits to get our lures down to the depth we need, need them to be. We've also talked about using the jet divers and those jet 40 jet divers actually get our lures down where we want, want them to be as well. So another thing with the dipsy divers is those help spread our lines out as well. All right guys, so with all the information I've given you, and I've shown you how to troll for walleye out here on Lake Erie. Hope that you liked the video. Like, comment, subscribe. Always keep fishing. Let's go.